Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I thank the Bangladesh Echo Society and the organizing team of this meeting for giving me the opportunity to participate uh, in this important session. So as we are aware, there has been almost an explosion in the field of uh, structural heart disease interventions in the last 10, 15 years because of the advancements in technology. And this change has also given birth to a new stream in echocardiography that is interventional echocardiography because echo is pivotal in this uh, the, the, uh, the entire process of structural heart disease interventions. So we know that for pre-procedure planning, there is no competition to echo. Echo is the modality which diagnoses, di which gives us the diagnosis for which we embark upon doing the intervention. Echo is also the most important modality for post-procedure assessment and follow because of its uh, simplicity and ease of use. But Importantly, ECHO has also become very important for intra-procedure guidance. The reason is that unlike coronary arteries, valves and soft tissues of the heart are not seen in fluoroscopy. So we need imaging guidance and for that TE is the ideal modality to guide the procedure. So unless we have some anatomic landmark like heavily calcified aortic annulus, which is usually there in patients who are undergoing TAVI, for most other procedures, ECHO is indispensable for guiding the procedure. Now, the main role of ECHO during the uh, actual procedure is to provide a spatial orientation and to guide the path of various devices and the uh, catheters and the implants which are going to be put. 3D becomes very useful because there is no other modality which could give such good spatial orientation and display of the cardiac anatomy as 3D echocardiography. So 3D TE is, plays a very important role, especially for mitral valve lesions, which are best visualized by 3D TE. And 3D is also very helpful because interventionists who is going, going to do the procedure for interventionists, in, uh, interpreting 2D images may be more challenging because they are not that used to of seeing those images. But 3D is much easier to interpret. So 3D, for all these reasons, plays an important role. Although 2D TE remains the main modality even during uh, the procedure. So I'm going to show you some examples where 3D uh, uh, has played a very important role in guiding the procedure. But before that, there are two main modalities, modes of TE that we use 3D TE for interprocedure guidance. One is biplane imaging simultaneous which provides us two uh, 2D Im images side by side. The, ang the relative angle between these two can be modified and the other is 3D and fast view, which we use intermittently. 3D and fast view uh, provides complete spatial orientation, but the image quality is generally poorer as compared to 2D and frame rate is also low. Therefore, 2D biplane or just plain simple 2D T is the main modality with intermittent 3D T. So I'll show you some examples. First is paravalvular leak closure. So paravalvular leak is one of the very common problems after valve surgery, and it is actually the second most common cause for reoperation. But reoperation for this purpose is challenging because most of the patients present within first year of their surgery, and doing surgery that early after initial surgery is not going to be easily acceptable, neither for the patient nor for the surgeon. And therefore, paravalvular leak closure by device becomes natural choice. So in such patients, we have to do a pre-procedure assessment for defining the number of defects which are present, uh, the location, the size, shape, prosthetic heart valve function, and other associated anomalies which may be relevant for planning the procedure. And then during the procedure, the whole procedure is performed under echo guidance. So here is an example. This patient has paravalvular leak closure around the mitral valve. So as we can see here in zero degree view, there is a jet origin seen. And then we are able to see jet origin in 79 degree view also. But from these images, it becomes very difficult to make out how many defects are there, where exactly they are situated, 
Zero degree image gives an impression that it is medial defect. 79 degree image gives impression that it is a posterior defect. But if we switch on 3D, it becomes immediately clear that there is a defect which is in the re region of around one to two o'clock and it is a large defect. And not only we can locate the defect, we can also quantify, uh, we can assess the shape and we can measure the dimensions. Uh, if we use only 2D, we will be able to measure only the, the diameter of the defect, but 3D can get, will tell us the total dimension, length and shape, which is required for planning the procedure. This is another patient, again, has paravalvular leak closure around the mitral valve. And once again, from these images, 2D images, it is difficult to make out the number and location of the defects. But 3D T shows us that there are two defects. One bigger defect is in the uh, around six o'clock position and the smaller defect is in the region of two o'clock. So once it is decided that the valvular leak closure is to be done, then this procedure will be done for mitral valve. The procedure is done with via venous access. And for that, interatrial septal need, septum needs to be crossed. So precise location of septal puncture is also very important, not only for this procedure, but for almost all procedures related to mitral valve and for left atrial appendage occlusion. If we don't do septal puncture in the proper position, it can lead to a lot of problems during the subsequent procedure. So for, that, for this 3D TE, biplane imaging is very helpful. We use bicable imaging and short axis views simultaneously to, to decide where we want to do septal puncture. So here we have two examples. In this, there is a mid fossa puncture and here we have a posterior puncture. If you want to do LA appendage occlusion, this is going to be ideal. If we do puncture here, we may not be able to do LA appendage occlusion via this route. So it's very important. Now, once septal puncture is done, the next step is to cross the defect, which actually is the most challenging step in paravalvular leak closure. And it is often very frustrating also because it is totally blind and we have to blindly guide the wire through the defect. Chloroscopy can give us some idea, but it is not that easy. So here I have an example where 3D was really very helpful. So as we can see, this patient has a defect which is close to the inter uh, atrial septum. We can see it better in 3D image. So this is the defect here. This is the mitral valve. And here we have interatrial septum. So we have to go very close to the septum. So when the septal puncture was done and the sheath was advanced, the sheath was pointing like this. And if from this position we advance the wire, we will be going towards the LA free wall or LA appendage, but we want to come here. So how we can do that? So one option would be to advance the wire, make a loop and then bring it like this. So which is what was done in this example, so a loop was made. But then after we reach close to the orifice of the defect, the next step was to turn the wire towards the left ventricle so that it could cross the defect. But in spite of a lot of efforts, this could not be done. And it at one point of time, it became very, uh, it, it appeared as if we would have to abandon the procedure. But then we decided to withdraw the sheath and flex it here itself like this and try to cross in this position. But interventionist was worried that if he withdrew the sheath uh, very close to the septum, he might come out of the, the left atrium. So this whole thing was done in, in 3D guidance. So as we can see, as sheath has been withdrawn and it has been flexed towards the defect. And now the sheath tip is directly pointing towards the uh, defect. It is almost on top of the defect. So it was very easy to cross the defect now after this. As we can see here, wire is going through the defect and the uh, plug has been put in. So this procedure became possible only because of 3D guidance. Now, another example here, this patient had two defects, one here and the other one is uh, the smaller defect here. So first this defect was closed, which was not difficult at all. But after that, for closing this defect, we had to cross into the left ventricle once again. And in fluoroscopy, it becomes very difficult to make out where the defect is and when the wire is going through the defect, whether it is going through the same defect 
around the device or it is going through the defect that we want to cross now. So once again, 3D was very helpful. As we can see here, this is the first device and this is the second defect which is being closed. And we are very, we can very uh, clearly see that the guide wire is going through the this defect. So with this confidence, uh, the interventionists can proceed with deployment of the device. And we, uh, this is the final image. We can see two devices around the mitral uh, prosthetic valve, and the defects were closed successfully, as we can see here in this. So there are a number of examples of paravalvular device closure where 3D proved useful and continues to be very useful. Now, apart from PVL closure, which is actually not a new procedure, it's been there for many years. There are no, so many other mitral valve interventions which have become available now, and some have become established treatment for various valve lesions, particularly mitral clip. So mitral clip is a procedure which is done for secondary or degenerative mitral regurgitation. In this procedure, a clip is placed at the tips of the mitral leaflets to come to few almost fuse them together so that the the mitral orifice which is single orifice well becomes double orifice well and the mitral regurgitation is taken care of so this procedure is done completely under chloroscopy and echo guidance te without echo this procedure cannot be done so this is one example this patient had flail PML with eccentric severe MR. As we can see here, PML is flail and there's massive MR. More images and 3D shows that this was a P2 flail. So Dr. Burkule in the morning had shown steps of mitral clip procedure. I won't go into those details. But briefly, I would mention that clip alignment is of paramount importance in this procedure. And for that, we use biplane imaging this is LVOT view, which tells us whether clip is anterior or posterior or central in relation to the metal orifice. It needs to be absolutely in central position. And this is bicommissural view, which tells us whether it is medial, uh, lateral, central, or medial. This will depend on this site of the jet origin. We want to be at exactly at the site from where the jet is originating. And at the same time, we have to also ensure that clip is perpendicular to the cooptation line. So for this 3D and fast view is used. So here in this, this is the cooptation line. And as we can see, this clip is not perpendicular. So this needs to be realigned. And after <clears throat> realignment and repeated confirmation that oh, we are through the jet, absolutely central and clip is properly aligned, clip is deployed. So as we can see here, this MR, which was severe, almost torrential is completely eliminated. and here we have double orifice mitral valve after deployment. This is another example. So in this patient, this was secondary MR. Clipping was done. When the clip was positioned, it appeared everything, everything appeared to be very good. This is double orifice valve here. There was no MR. But when clip was deployed, somehow AML came off. And as we can see, this P, the clip is now hanging only on the PML. So another clip had to be deployed just lateral to this. So this again became possible only because of 3D. So as we can see here, this is the original clip. And this is the second clip, which is holding together both AML and PML. And because of uh, this, uh, I mean, after deployment of this second clip, MR completely disappeared. And there was no significant gradient. Apart from mitral well, there are so many interventions being developed for tricuspid valve also. We have a clip similar to you know, mitra clip for tricuspid valve also. There are so many other procedures. All of this again required echo guidance, particularly 3D TE, which is again very helpful in defining the anatomy of the defect, the wells, leaflets, device position, location, and all, all those things. So to summarize, structural heart disease interventions are becoming increasingly common. The scope is widening because of ongoing advancements in technology. 3D TE is indispensable in guiding many of these interventional procedures, especially those related to the mitral valve and now tricuspid valve as well. Thank you so much. <clears throat>
Thank you, sir, for your excellent uh, presentation on overview um, of uh, 3D echocardiography and it, in, its importance in intervention. So I would like to um, um, uh, ask uh, the panelists if you have any question to the speakers, you can ask. Or yeah, Mustafa Jawan, sir, um, ask a question to Dr. Anuruddha De. Uh, you, can you just... Uh, respond to uh, his to uh, yes. question yes Thank before you. i am responding uh, the three question in fact <clears throat> the first is the whether we can detect by echocardiography any osteal stenosis or not of course we can detect uh, if the window is uh, good and uh, we can uh, like to see particularly and the focus on the osteum and then we can detect the, of course the osteal stenosis even the flow gradient everything can be determined no problem there's a lack of time i have a lot of slides but i could not show it second thing is a very very important that i have already touched it that is a like uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, consult uh, even regarding the small facial uh, defect Yes, these are there. Here is the importance of the percute, um, myocardial contrast perfusion scanning that I've showed only in one important case uh, in the before even uh, going to, to see the viability. And in fact, it can be done even the post PCI. And this, uh, this modality is coming very good uh, to find out the perfusion after the, uh, after the PCI. It, even it can be done before PCI and it can be done even after PCI. So the, in both the cases, it gives a fairly good important things in the before PCI is the viability and after PCI, it, it will give you the prognosis. And third is that your question was that the way the LV clot uh, can be detected only by the TT or the TEC, LV clot majority of the case in 95% of the cases can be detected only by the trans thoracic. You, you may not have to do the trans esophageal echocardiography. Of course, in certain cases, you may have to resort to. Even if you were in doubt, particularly the LV clot in the apical region, here again, the LV opacification by the contrast echocardiography, again, very helpful to find out there is a clot or not. 